Good morning, YouTube. It is 4.06. It is Wednesday. And uh, today's topic is hydrophobic metals. Because, you know, water's bad. Stay away. It's way too early. Or that Higgs chromosomes bathe the electrons like the magnetism of particles and momentum of receptors radiation are mathematics a solution asteroid what am i doing up um so hydrophobic metals uh the these are metals that uh, are afraid of water, so they re they repel water. That's what hydrophobic means. Uh, not that they're afraid of it, but they repel it. Um, why, you know, why would be we be interested in in metals that repel water? Well, you know, so like, there are kitchen appliances. You know, like Teflon. You know, the 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 Teflon appliances. They had this coating over the metal, and you know, you could cook and. And then, you know, you could wash up and it would dry really fast. And um, that's always fun. But what <laughs> if you ever had a Teflon appliance, you you know, if you scrape too hard, you would scrape that, that um, you would scrape that coating off, uh, which isn't good um, because then you just ruin the appliance. Um, the coating would come off. You would get to the metal underneath. It would rust, blah, 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 right? So, you know, a hydrophobic metal will never rust because the water will ne never get to the metal to, to rust it out. Um, it gets repelled all the time. Uh, so, you know, we have things like stainless steel that, that don't rust or that are very, you know, resistant to rust. Well, you can have a hydrophobic metal that does even better. Um, let's see, what else? You can make an airplane out of hydrophobic metal and never have to de-ice the thing because the ice will never form on it because the water will never stick on it oh great ideas um if you made a car same thing you wouldn't you know you'd never have to go take hot water out to your car to to uh to to melt the ice that's that's covering it <laughs> um of course you know you only know about that if if you've ever lived in a in a cold weather area uh, right now I'm in Seattle and it rarely gets cold that's why I moved out here um, so you know various uses for for hydrophobic metals how the heck do you get a metal to do that so um, it has to do with uh, it has to do with the um, the surface pattern of the metal, not necessarily the um, the composition of the metal. So they've done this to to a few metals here, and they're going to try and expand it to more. And I forget which ones they covered. I think it was like aluminum and titanium, and maybe one others. But you, it has to do with the surface pattern, and you do this by uh, using a laser. Ooh, laser. Um, and so if you, if you have your surface and you have your laser, you, you etch a certain pattern in the surface with the laser and you, and you have to do it with quick, short bursts of very powerful laser light. Um, the specific pattern resembles that of a lotus leaf, um, which I guess lotus leaves repel water really well. Um. So this is another instance where we we take an idea from nature and we try and replicate it onto these other materials. Uh, and we, we do that a lot, or we try to do that a lot, because nature, you know, nature has some great ideas. Uh, over years of evolution, they've, you know, nature has come up with uh, certain attributes or habits or tidbits that, you know, works for them. And, and as we investigate more of nature, like this lotus leaf and the pattern on it, you know, we adopt it and if we can, uh, try and get metals that that repel water and, and we figured that one out. So that's kind of cool. Um, like I said, they've only worked on a few metals. They're going to try and expand it to more. Um, I don't know how difficult it is or how feasible it is, whether um, whether it's financially viable. I assume that as they do this more, the process for etching out metal surfaces will get cheaper. 
Uh, and maybe we will see, you know, things like kitchen appliances um, sort of flood the market that, with this with this etching. Um, you know, the way economics is, if if the process is too expensive and your your kitchenware is too expensive, people won't buy it. It's not going to matter. Whatever the benefits uh, for things like cars and airplanes, that kind of the same thing, um, but you have to calculate. Well, what's the cost of etching out this metal beforehand compared to all, let's say you're talking airplanes, all the de-icing costs, you know, and sometimes that's hard to determine, but we'll come up with economic math to, to figure that out and, um, you know, we'll put a dollar value on it and with that dollar value we'll determine if it's economically viable. Um, so, there you go, uh, hydrophobic metal, not as crazy as some of the other things we talk about here, uh, but still kind of cool. Uh, stealing from, not stealing, uh, borrowing ideas from nature. Well, we don't really give it back, it's not borrowing. Uh, whatever. Uh, you know, taking ideas from nature, replicating, utilizing. We'll see if it takes off. But All right, I gotta go get to work. You've gotta go do whatever it is you do. Um, We'll talk to you tomorrow. Thank you for watching another episode of Way Too Early for Explanations. If you enjoyed it, please click on the like button down here. If you want to follow me on Instagram or Twitter, I'll post links at the bottom of the description field. If you want to subscribe to my channel, you can do so by clicking on the subscribe button around here. If you want to get to my channel to see more videos, you can click on the link to Way Too Early for Explanations, or you can click on the eye chart that shows up in the upper right hand corner. Every morning I try to kick out more videos, um, so stay tuned and come on back if you want to observe more early morning technical battles. Thanks again.